Hey everyone, I'm Nick. Welcome to version 2 of C++ Crash Course. Now in this episode of the series we're going to be talking about copy constructors in C++. Now uh, last video we talked about constructors and how we can use a constructor to find what happens when you create a new instance of a class or a new instance of a struct. Now with copy constructors what we're defining is what's going to happen when we set two objects of the same type equal to each other. So let's go ahead and get started and we'll open up this copy constructors.cpp. So we've got our class wallet here that we've been using for these examples. We've got a private data members, dollars and cents. And then we have uh, our two constructors, right? So um, the one that we've defined that takes two integers and the one we've told the compiler to generate for us by setting, you know, wallet with an empty parameter list equal to default. Then right below that, we have our copy constructor. Now our copy constructor is going to take um, whatever the class type is um, by reference. And in this case, we're going to go ahead and pass it by const reference. That's uh, pretty typical um, when we're defining something like a copy constructor. Now, when we're saying by const reference, we're saying we're just not going to modify, say, the old value, the old version of this object. So we're, if we're setting A is equal to B, we're saying that in this copy constructor, we're not going to be modifying uh, B. So uh, down here, we actually have the definition for this copy constructor. So again, it has the same name as the class, no return type, um, and it's going to take a const wallet by reference. And every single time it gets called, it will go ahead and just print out calling the copy constructor. And then we'll go ahead and set dollars and cents to w.get dollars and w.get cents. Now, like I said, if we're doing something like, um, you know, a is equal to B, or down here we're explicitly saying, you know, wallet W2 is equal to W1. You can think of W1 as being passed into this copy constructor, and we're calling, say, W1.get dollars and W1.get cents. Um, and we're setting W2's dollars and cents equal to those values. Now we have to remember that, you know, dollars and cents are private, right? They're private data members. So we have to go through these getters and setters if we're accessing for a different object, right? So W2 doesn't need to um, you know, go through the setters and getters for its own dollars and cents, but if it wants to access, say, W1's dollars and cents, it has to access uh, through these this get dollars and get cents. So down here in our main function, it's going to be pretty simple. We're going to create an uh, instance of a wallet using our, uh, our defined constructor that takes two integers. Uh, we're going to create an instance of W1 right here, and then we'll go ahead and uh, we'll create a new instance of uh, wallet called W2 and set it equal to W1. Now in this case, we'll go ahead and call the copy constructor. And then later on, if we say set W2 is equal to W1 or W1 is equal to W2 outside of you know defining a new variable, right? that would also call the copy constructor. All right, so let's go ahead and see what happens when we com compile this. So if I go ahead and compile copy constructors uh, .cpp, and we'll call this output maybe just copy, and we execute copy, we see that, you know, even though I didn't call, say, or call, you know, set dollars or set cents, the copy constructor goes ahead and copies dollars and cents from the first instance of the wallet W1 equal uh, into W2. Now, what happens if I don't define a copy constructor? Now, in this case, it's actually pretty simple. So if we go ahead and get rid of um, our definition of the copy constructor right here, uh, the compiler will generate a version of the copy constructor for us. And in the compiler generated a, the version of the copy constructor, uh, for a very simple case like this, it will just copy the data members from one class to the other class, kind of like what we did in our case. So if we go ahead and recompile copy constructors.cpp, and we execute copy, we see that uh, we no longer get a print that says calling the copy constructor because it's generated by the compiler. So it's not going to go ahead and you know, give us a print statement like that. But we see it has the same effect here, right? So it sees it copies um, whatever the contents were in W1, and when we call W2.print, we get the exact same values. All right, so that's a little bit about copy constructors in C++. They're a very important thing to learn, especially once we start talking about copy constructors um, and what happens when we pass, say, objects to a function by value versus by reference, and then when the return from a function. Right, and what happens there? Are we calling the copy constructor or are we not calling the copy constructor? If you have very big objects, this can be a very big deal if we're copying a very big object into a function versus if we're just, say, passing it by reference. All right, so that's going to go ahead and do it for this video. As always, all this code can be found at github.com slash coffee before arch. So here we're in C++ crash course, then under fundamental concepts and under objects. 
and copy constructors, you can find this example. So feel free to download this, play around with this. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. And as always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.